Business and Conversation. It's Rob back with another video. Uh, this video is gonna be with my grandfather. I just got done shooting it uh, and it was a great video. I learned a lot about his life and just uh, gave more insight on me as a person. I didn't know how much I related to my grandpa so much. My mindset and my ideas, I see that I got it from him a lot of, a lot of the stuff. And so uh, I just want y'all to be encouraged by this, uh, th to have these conversations. Uh, one of the reasons why I named this channel Missing Conversations uh, is because uh, sometimes as young people, we forget to ask our grandparents or our parents these hard questions that we have in our head. Sometimes you, you don't have to always reinvent the wheel. Uh, sometimes you can just ask your parents and they might have the answer to the question that you ask yourself sometimes. All right, welcome back Missing Conversation. Today I have my grandpa Andrew, it's my mom's dad. Uh, and I, I was able to get him set down and we're gonna have some questions and some interviews for him. He's gonna give us some advice uh, for young people and for just uh, people that wanna become uh, greater in life. Uh, so grandpa, uh, thank you for have, or thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for letting me interview you. Uh, I'm gonna start the interview off with some questions uh, and also some words. Okay. And basically the word, every word I give you, you'll give uh, your definition of that word, okay. what it means to you. Okay. Okay, so first word is gonna be legacy. What does legacy mean to you? A legacy means to what I left behind. How did I live and what legacy I left for my children and grandchildren to follow. Okay. Discipline, what does discipline mean to you? Discipline means how was I raised and how did I raise my children? How was I disciplined? And how did my discipline, by my father discipline, how did I transfer it to my children? Okay. So uh, what does passion mean to you? Passion means how I feel about something, how I feel, what kind of feeling, how I feel about things I have comfort, or how I feel about people. Okay. Uh, what about purpose? Purpose is, a, uh, well, what was my purpose in life? Well, my purpose in life to, to do what? To get what? Uh, that's what I describe purpose as. Do you believe it's a difference between passion and purpose? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, passion, you just have a passion for something. To me, purpose when you start working toward that goal, trying to fulfill that goal, trying to get to what your purpose in life or what you want to accomplish in life. Okay. All right, what does faith mean to you? Faith means a lot to me. I said that's why I am where I am today, because the faith that I have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. By me having faith in him, I believe he helped me overcome a lot of things in life, and he has blessed me in so many ways. When I was in Vietnam, I had faith in him that he had helped me come through it and came out stronger than I was before and had more faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, what does family mean to you? Family means... Your children, your wife, your children. Family mean a, a family together. And also a family mean a family that worship God and praise God together. Yes, sir. What does fatherhood mean to you? Fatherhood mean how was I with a father? How did I raise my children? How did I inspire them to inspire their children to be? Main thing, to believe in Christ, Jesus Christ. What about leadership? Leadership, that is important to me. I always thought I was a leader. I always thought I was going to go place. And that's why I come for the things I did on my job. I started off on my job as just a welder, as an employee. And when I finished, I had worked all the way up from a lead person all the way up to a supervisor of my department. That's how I, I leadership. Leadership, you got to be determined that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. So that's why I feel about leadership. So what about work ethic? Work ethic. Now, my father taught work extra than me. My father bought me up working when I was a little boy. He used to have us out cutting wood, chopping wood. And that's what work had put in me to work, and that's why I worked so hard to try to comfort things. I didn't want nobody to give me nothing. I want to work for it. And I want to thank God for letting me accomplish what I have accomplished. Yes, sir. What about a relentlessness? In other words, yeah, I, I never thought about giving up. Yeah, sometimes you have, sometimes you do come up that you want to give up. But you keep having the strength and the faith that, hey, I can do it. Other people can do it. I can do it. So I was about everybody, have a legend that you want to be successful in life. To work hard. Don't give up. Ask God to give you the strength and faith to keep going on. Yes, sir. Last question, or last word, finances. Finances. I always uh, worked hard, and when I was working, I always wanted to have something. Even when I was going to high school, I was able to buy my own vehicle. 
And from the 10th grade on, I worked and saved in order to pay for my car and pay for my education from the 10th grade on. So finance is how can you handle your money? You, uh, you got to plan and be uh, disciplined on saving money, not spending trying to get everything that uh, other people get. Okay, good job, Grandpa. That's really good. So uh, my, my channel is called Missing Conversations, and one of the reasons why I call it Missing Conversations is because a lot of times in life, us as young people, we don't get a chance to sit down with our grandparents or our elders and ask them those big questions that we one one day might need to know. Yeah. Uh, you know, they hear, you hear about not reinventing or not uh, reinventing the wheel. Yeah. You know, those questions and stuff you could you could prevent yourself from going through if you just mm -hmm. ask your grandparents or your parents or anything like that. And so that's one reason why I call the channel Missing Conversations because uh, it's you know sometimes we don't we don't have these conversations with our grandparents and stuff, mm -hmm. and so it's it's something that's missing and something that we might need to know one day. Uh, and so that's why that's why I sat down with you, Grandpa, because one of my desires and one of my passions is to become uh, my own business owner and like pursue my own uh, business one day and become an entrepreneur. Uh, I often say I want to be a philanthropist. I want to give back like you uh, you all gave back to me. And so, um, yeah, that's why I sat down with you, Grandpa. I know you, you uh, have wisdom about finances and uh, faith and uh, what your legacy wants to be. And so uh, with that being said, who are you, Grandpa? Uh, who is Grandpa Andrew? Uh, I'm first, who am I? First, I'm the son of most critic. And I'm the father of Tara, Paul, Tara, and Antonio most critic. I'm their father. And I am a hard worker. And I feel like I can accomplish things in life and I have. And all through the blessing and the guiding of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So growing up around you, Grandpa, always seeing you hard working. Uh, every time I come to y'all house, you out working and doing something. You, uh, I've known you worked at Verco for how many years? Fifty-one years. And you retired when? I when retired you? when I was seventy-one. 71. In nineteen, uh, uh, I think it was uh, March nineteen, nineteen, uh, nineteen. 17. I think March 1917 when I retired. I noticed that you picked up on another job. You, you couldn't you couldn't just uh, settle in retiring. You had to do something, right? Yes, I had to do something else. You know, I, when you had been work, trained to work all your life and had a job all your life, like I worked for 51 years, I tried coming in just sitting around the house, but I said that wasn't me. That made me feel bored and awkward. So that's why I got me a little part-time job where I could get out and do something. I guess I'm just used to working and going. Yes. So sitting at home, I couldn't, uh, that didn't uh, fit me. Yes. That was perfect. Yes, sir. So I know this was your generation, Grandpa. It seemed like all of y'all are hardworking people. You, you're a hard worker. My other Grandpa Temple, he's a hard worker. And I just want to know, like, what does that come from? Like, because our generation, we don't, we don't, we're not as hard working as you. We have so many resources like technology and we know how to work it and all. Uh, but we had the mindset and the work ethic that y'all had. I believe we would take the world to another level if we had that work ethic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we, we miss that. And I yes. feel like if y'all had the technology and the opportunities that we had, uh, y'all would, y'all would take it to another level in life. And mm -hmm. so where did, where did your passion to uh, become a strong uh, person in your work ethic, where did that come from? Uh, that came from my father. My father was a hard worker. He worked for Union Pacific Railroad for 30 some years. That was a hard job. And he put in us. He didn't let us sit around the house watching TV and stuff like we let our children do today. He would put out cutting wood, cutting the yard. He put out doing something. So when you brought up working, you had that work after to want to have a job, want to do a job. And another thing, well, we let down ourselves, parent. We kind of let the ball down, I said. Because we start getting our children things, cars, clothes, what they want, tennis shoes. But when we got up, you have to work for what you got. Once I become an eight, once I become, I said 16 or 17 years old, I worked for everything that I got. My father wouldn't, uh, he said, hey, you get out and get a job, uh, cut somebody's yard or cut wood, you earn that. And that's why my work ethic came from, my father, instilling me to get out and work for what I need. You talked about your father, your father is the main one that taught you discipline. He said, well, one of the reasons he taught, one of the ways he taught you discipline is helping you get out and do tasks and cut woods and stuff like that. How important is discipline to uh, this generation? And how do you feel like we should uh, go by pursuing discipline, learning discipline? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, 
a discipline like uh when your father told you something to do then you had you know you know you had to do it you didn't give him no back talk you didn't say i didn't want to do that uh we go to the table what's on the table that's what you eat you know we were disciplined to do what our father and mother asked us or told us to do and that's not what we didn't instill in that in our children i think that's why we kind of let the ball down we kind of let our children say if you don't want to eat that well eat this here if you want a car or something, well, I'll buy you a car. I said, that's why we let discipline down. But as a whole, our father and mother put in us to work and do our task and obey them. You didn't talk back to them. When they told you to do something, you did it. And that's the main thing where I got my discipline from my father and my mother. And that's why I got my scribe, my incentive to work and something. They said, what you, when you want something, you work and get that. And I wanted a car. My father put me out there working. I started getting a job when I was 17 years old. And again, from 17 on, I worked my pay my own way through high school, buy my clothes, my lunch, and everything. Uh, so again, my father dissed me to do that. Uh, uh. So um, passions, we talked about uh, the word passion and purpose. So what, what were some of your passions? And also, uh, what do you feel like your purpose is in life? Uh, some of my passion was when I was growing up, I want to travel. I had a passion. I want to fly an airplane. Huh. I want to do things. That I want to be successful. I want to have something. And that's why my passion came from when I want something. I want to have my own home and stuff. And that's why I got the passion from my father to say, if you want something, you got to work for it. And my passion was to work and go to school. I went to school. At night, I went to school at night and worked 12 hours a day and went to school at night. And I got my education. I ended up with a three-point something grade average when I graduated away from Scott, uh, from college. Again, my father put in me my passion to try to make something out of myself, to try to be somebody. What college did you go to, Grandpa? I went to Arkansas Baptist College, and I went to the uh, Washita University, got my uh, six hours on my master's. What uh, great or what was your major? My major was sociology. Sociology, okay, okay. And so you left college and went to yeah. Verco. I, I was working at Verco while I went to school. Okay. And when I finished school, when I finished school, the manager, the president of the better president out of the out of the plant, he promoted me up to a supervisor when I finished college. And from there, I took it to another level. I went to the top of my uh, department. Okay. What did Verco do? What are y'all specialize? Or what did they specialize in? Uh, we specialize in school funding. Okay. We make all kind of public seating, folding chairs, and all. But our main thing is school funding. Now, again, at one time, Verco was the number one school funder in the nation. Mm -hmm. And still, you see on TV, you see a lot. I look at, you know, I I work for Verco so long. When I see a school picture, I always look and see what kind of classroom front it is. And a lot of it is Verco. Wow. Well, so did you talk about purpose? Like, what do you feel like your purpose is in life, uh, now, even now? Or? Yeah. I feel like my purpose in life was then to be a leader, the go trailer. My purpose, man, I even looked at some time I had. Look at so my purpose are to go place, to travel, and to do things. Yes, sir. And that was my purpose. And right now, my purpose are to try to help my children and grandchildren, main thing to see Christ try to help them get them to Christ. That's my main purpose in life right now. And my main purpose also to help them be forsaken and try to instill in them to be forsaken and try to show them how I overcome obstacles and got through college and owned my home and got promoted on my job. I end up to the top of my department. I try to instill in that in my children and grandchildren. And I think Rob gonna do the same. Yes, I sir. think he gonna be top. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. <laughs> Um, do you feel like you fulfilled all your purpose or passions? No, I never did. Okay. I don't feel like I feel all my purpose and passion. I never called. Again, one of my passions was the fire airplane. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got started a family too early where I didn't get enough college to go and fly that airplane. So I didn't get all my passion completed. But I got some of them. I got my home and my family. I got my family believing in Christ, most of them. Yes, All of them, I think, yes, that I know, they believe in Christ. Yes, sir.
So you talked about building a family and starting a family. Was there ever a time where you were afraid to become a father or even become a husband? Yeah, you always have that fear. Has anybody said they dealt with a fear of anything? I think they're not being truthful. They may, but I don't think they're being truthful. <laughs> in things in life, you're going to come up your free. You're afraid of when you're afraid you have your own child. You know, you're just young. You say, man, can I take care of them? And when you're married, man, can I make it? Can I afford a family? Can I, if I got the job and, and ability to raise a family and take care of my family and build them a home? So, yeah, you're going to have some fears in life. And some of your preppers that you, at least I didn't uh, succeed. I wasn't successful in all the preppers what I wanted to do. How important do you think faith is to a young person growing up? And uh, how, how important is it to you? Faith to a young person is very, very important. Because I believe in Christ, you can do all things. And I'm going to tell you, Christ really have helped me get to where I am in Christ. Got my home paid for, got my education, I had a job 51 years. It wasn't nothing that I did. It was Christ working through me. I had faith and I asked Christ, Lord, let me and my family be together. Help us to believe in you. Help us to stay together. So you got to learn to pray and ask God for guidance. And without him, I wouldn't have got to where I, I have today. Yes, sir. And what was the other part of the question? Uh, yes, sir. You answered uh, answer both of them. Uh, yes, sir. But uh, that's I can testi testify to that, too, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Me, uh, I got rededicated. I remember y'all were there when I got baptized yes. in Little Rock at Fellowship North. Mm -hmm. And uh, just I learned just trusting. Uh, you know, I didn't know what it was to become a Christian. I really didn't know what that looked like. I seen that y'all were believers. Uh, but I, I know I had to figure out for myself because yeah. I couldn't go on the back of y'all faith. I had to figure out who God was for myself yeah. because, you know, he wants to be personal with me. And so just just be, believing in God, uh, I learned how to, you know, tithe. And I learned how to just trust God. And I just I just believe my, my life is because the way I have it, uh, because my life is the way it is because I believe in God and I trusted him. And I, I, I give it all to him. I, just like, you know, a good stock. I, I sow my, my first fruits to God uh, first because I, I know, like I said, the reason why I have what I have is because of God. And so uh, I thank y'all for uh, teaching us discipline and uh, having a good faith and uh, a relationship with God. Uh, so uh, talking about business.